we'll take a look at the long and strange road for Corey Perry on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering hockey for well over a decade. And today's episode today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So I've been covering the Ducks for the better part of five plus years. I've been hosting Locked On Ducks since 2019. I'm also the public dress voice for the Coachella Valley Firebirds. And as I've been covering this Ducks team since 2019, I have seen everything in the kitchen sink with the rebuild of this Ducks team. I've also seen the weird road that Corey Perry has taken since leaving Anaheim. And it's been a very weird road for Corey Perry, who, by the way, is one of the few players that you that I would consider um, just someone that has won everything. I'll give a quick shout out here to S. Preston, who does just amazing, amazing artwork. And he pointed out that Corey Perry has done well on an international scale as well. I mean, he's won gold in the Olympics in 2010 and 2014. He won the World Championships. He won the Canada World Cup. He won the World Junior Championships way back in 05. Oh, by the way, if I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do, he also won the Memorial Cup. Yes, he won the Memorial Cup. Oh, boy. Yeah, so he really has won everything he won that with the um with the knights and guess who he beat in that memorial cup final Sidney crosby and ramuski so Corey perry really has won everything that you could possibly win including the stanley cup in 2007 so i mean that weird road started back in 2003 when he got drafted by the Mighty Ducks. And by the way, this is a case where the Ducks got a pick from a trade that benefited them. I know in the previous episode, I talked about all the times the Ducks have been, you know, for lack of better terms, fleeced as far as trades. And then their pick falls very far, very far. Well, there is one case in 2003. This is a case where everything happened perfectly for a reason. The Ducks traded that pick, or they traded two picks from the second round, 36 and 54, to move up to that first round pick, and that's where they got Corey Perry with a 28th pick from Dallas, who made it all the way to the conference finals in 2003. So that's how the Ducks wound up with Corey Perry. Now, can you imagine if Corey Perry had started with Dallas. Hmm. More on that in a second. So Corey Perry gets drafted by the Mighty Ducks. He does well in juniors. He goes on to win world juniors and finally makes his long day de- away to debut with the Mighty Ducks in 2005, 2006 because of some stupid strike. And in only his second season, he won the Stanley Cup. He was right there glove by glove with Ryan Getzloff, his buddy. So that was really cool to see. But this was way back in 2007, folks. That's like ancient history to some Ducks fans. It really is. And then the losing, well, not really the losing yet because the Ducks were still a decent team after that. They would still win plenty of games. There'd be plenty of good moments. Corey Perry led the league in goals. He had a 50-goal season. He won the Richard Trophy. He won the Hart Trophy in 2011. That was his best season by far. 98 points, almost getting to that elusive century mark 
which he never got. 98 would be the closest he's ever gotten in his career. But 50 is a career high for Corey Perry. And that's when the string of division titles began. Those were good teams. And Corey Perry was right in the thick of it. So you want to talk about someone that has been very important to the Ducks organization. Corey Perry was a vital part of the Ducks organization for 14 seasons. 14 years. And then the summer of 2019 happened. He was shipped off to Dallas. The team that originally drafted him or originally was supposed to draft him but traded away the rights back in 2003. So Corey Perry makes his debut with the Dallas Stars and had an inauspicious beginning with the Dallas Stars where he got himself thrown out of the Winter Classic. Yeah, remember that? Dallas Stars versus Natural Predators 2020 Winter Classic. And he gets himself thrown out of the game. The walk of shame. Yeah, some of you might remember that. Some of you might have made some memes about it in the past, but it worked out in the end. I mean, despite COVID and all that stuff, the Dallas Stars did make it to the Stanley Cup final only to lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2020. Fast forward the following season, another COVID shortened season, Corey Perry moves on to the Montreal Canadiens and takes the Canadiens to the Stanley Cup final where they at least took out the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they took out Vegas. But then they lost to Tampa Bay once again in the cup final. So two years in a row, two losses. Well, if you can't beat them, join them. That's what Corey Perry tried to do with the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2022, and he lost that one as well. So three consecutive years, three consecutive Stanley Cup losses because Tampa Bay could not three-peat they lost in 2022 to the Colorado Avalanche. This was only two years ago. Yeah, that's a weird one. He stuck around Tampa Bay for a little bit for the following year. This season, he started off in Chicago, did poorly, was let, was let go, contract terminated, signed on with the Edmonton Oilers. That's made a big difference, folks. And now Corey Perry, in this weird roundabout way, after, you know, battling some personal stuff, he's back in the Stanley Cup final with his fifth different team, which I think I saw this on a tweet that that ties an NHL record that he has made the Stanley Cup final with five different teams, the Ducks, the Stars, the Habs, the Lightning, and now the Edmonton Oilers. And now this is the crux of it. Corey Perry has a chance. Well, he's already gotten some like weird like statistical oddities. Corey Perry, once again, tied a record. Fifth consecutive, or it's not fifth consecutive, but fifth different team to reach the cup final. If Corey Perry loses yes think about this if he loses again in this Stanley Cup final he'd be the first player to lose with four different teams in the Stanley Cup final and four in five years might I add yeah how about that that's that's like some Buffalo Bills type stuff but if Edmonton wins then Corey Perry will have by far the record for the longest wait between Stanley Cup wins. If the Oilers manage to win the Cup, he will have waited 17 years between Cup victories. Most NHL players don't even have careers that last 17 seasons, let alone 20 or 19, which is where Corey Perry's at right now. To go that long between cup wins, it is going to feel really sweet for Corey Perry. So fans, I'll ask you, are you rooting for Corey Perry in the Stanley Cup final? Let me know. Anyway, we're going to head into the first intermission. Stay locked in. Now, a brief word from 
FanDuel. It is winner take all time in the NBA and NHL playoffs. It's the NBA Finals and the Stanley Cup Final. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, futures, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook and the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And please gamble responsibly. Welcome back. Well, I just talked about the last series and Corey Perry, but now we're going to get into the nitty gritty and I'm actually going to give my predictions right now. So let's get into that. Edmonton Oilers versus the Florida Panthers. That series starts on Saturday in Florida. They have the home ice advantage. And the reason for the really weird schedule is because these two teams are as far apart as you can get. Um, Edmonton and Surprise Florida are more than 2,500 miles away. So not only are you dealing with that mileage, but you're also dealing with the cross-country travel you're going across country lines Edmonton and Canada Florida way down south and in fact these are both the southernmost and the northernmost teams in the National Hockey League so you got to take that into consideration and the way the schedule is laid out is really just spread out so game one isn't until Saturday so we got a while for that one and then after that, game two is Monday the 10th, then t- three days off, Thursday the 13th, then Saturday the 15th in Edmonton, then another two days off, then they have Tuesday the 18th at Florida, then another two days off, June 21st, which is the first day of summer in Edmonton, and then three days later, game seven, if necessary, would be in Florida. So a bit of a rough travel schedule no longer is it game day off game day off game day off because of that travel so we're looking at a very extensive series and it's not just in the nhl the american hockey league as well you got the possibility of seeing the firebirds against the hershey bears and that can involve some weird travel as well and that can go deep into the summer just like last year's calder cup final so something to keep in mind um Odds are in favor of the Florida Panthers. In fact, they are the favorite to win the Stanley Cup, according to FanDuel. um, They are the favorite, not by much. Um, The favorite, or the most likely, is that the Panthers win in seven. And in fact, a lot of sports books have this one going either six games or seven games, and I agree with that. So if I were to give a prediction right now, I would put I put my money on the Florida Panthers. I think they're a little bit deeper. Um, they go at least three lines deep. They got the better goaltending. Uh, no offense to Stuart Skinner. Stuart Skinner is a tremendous goaltender. He really got a head start with the Bakersfield Condors in the American Hockey League a few years ago. Um, Stuart Skinner always played the Pacific Division tough. He gave... Um, the Ontario Reign a hard time. He gave the Roadrunners a hard time. So Stuart Skinner knows what it takes. But I cannot bet against Sergei Bobrovsky. So I'm officially going to go Panthers in seven. I think this one will go the distance. Edmonton is a very good team. Um, they're built on their offense. They're built on their special teams. We saw it in the last series against the Dallas Stars where Edmonton's special teams were just magnificent. They had a perfect 100% penalty kill against a Dallas team that should have frankly been better. And Edmonton's power play was perfect in game six. That's one of the best power plays in the entire national hockey, in all of hockey, to be honest. So I have to go with the odds and say this one goes a distance. So yeah, that's where I'm at officially. Um, As far as players to watch out for. Brandon Montour obviously is going to be a player to watch out for. He's already got nine points in this playoff. Um, He's going to provide a good bit of depth 
for that Florida team, so he could make a difference. And I've mentioned Sam Carrick on the Edmonton side, but I also have to mention Adam Henrique, who was out with injury, and now that he's back with the Oilers, um, those specialty face-offs are going to make a difference. So I could see that extending the series. But I'm not going to go against Kachuk or Bobrovsky, so that's where I'm at with that series. All right. Um, after the second admission, I'm going to talk about some non-signings that took place and what that means for the Anaheim Ducks on the other side. Welcome back. All right. So we had some non-signings that took place over the weekend that are pretty important. And I'm going to start with the fact that there was a deadline just this past weekend where three players had to sign um, their contracts. Otherwise, they were going to become free agents. And what that is, is um, it's the must sign by date according to Cap Friendly. And the unofficial start to the off season was June 1st. And that's where uh, players have to sign their ELC by this past Saturday. Otherwise, they don't have the exclusive signing rights anymore. And Anaheim had three players on the list. Ben King, Connor, Vid- Connor Vidston, and Albino Sunsvik, who played in Sweden. None of them got signed. Um, Sunsvik played 52 games in the Swedish Hockey League. Vidston played mostly in the Western Hockey League and had a cup of coffee in the American Hockey League. Ben King had almost a full season in the American League with the San Diego goals, 15 goals, 15 assists, so not too bad. But none of them got signed. And I honestly thought the one player that would get signed would be Ben King. Um, He had some great moments this past season. Um, Had a couple of really solid games late in the season, so I thought he was going to get signed out of the three, but none of them were given an ELC. So, what does that mean? Sunsvik, we don't know what's going to happen with Sunsvik. He might just play in Sweden. Um, Vidston is eligible to re-enter the draft, so he could get picked up by someone else as a late round pick or could come as a late free agent. Um, as far as Ben King, he is too old to re-enter the draft, and I got to give a hat tip to John Broadbent from Defend the Nest on this one. Um, he actually did look this up. So for this year, ice hockey players born between January 1st, 2004 and September 15, 2006 are eligible for selection in the 2024 NHL Entry Draft. Additionally, undrafted non-North American players born in 03 are eligible for the draft. And those players who were drafted in the 2022 NHL Entry Draft but not signed by an NHL team and who were born after June 30th, 2004 are also eligible to re-enter the draft. Unfortunately for King, he does not fit in that and he is too old. He was born May 15th, 2002, so he's 22, so he cannot re-enter the draft. And John actually um, shared my sentiment on this. He likely stays on an AHL-only deal and hopes to get an ELC during the season. Um, We've seen this happen several times on several teams where players get only an AHL deal and that's it. And they later parlay that into an ELC or they prove themselves in the American League and winds up getting a two-way deal. So it has happened. Um, For King's sake, I do hope he sticks around because I thought he did very well in San Diego. So that's what's going on there. Uh, One other bit of news that I want to get to right now is actually two bits of news. One is Rodwin Dionisio, Dionisio, who is part Swiss, part Dominican, and he actually did his interview in Espanol um, pretty much just super happy um, with the Saginaw spirit. Um, 
Great, great kid. Great prospect for the Ducks. Loved seeing that. Um, also, something that just happened is the Ducks did sign someone to a three-year ELC, uh, Damian Clara, who is a goalie in the Swedish League. He's only 19 years old. Um, the Ducks do love those goalie prospects. Uh, we've seen that in the past with Kali Klang, Ole Eriksson Ek, and they like those European goalies. So even though he is he was a top junior player in Sweden second division um, he was the first non-Swedish player to earn the golden grid um, in the past season 25 and 8 record 2.23 goals against 913 save percentage also very good um, and again they like their big goalie 66214 um, just from what little I've seen a little bit reminiscent of Gage Alexander to make that comparison there so just something to watch out for in the coming weeks all right with that said that is going to wrap it up here again want to thank you all for checking us out and hey don't forget the 24 7 youtube channel for lock on sports today check that out um, you can follow me on twitter x at stimpy jd Show's Twitter X is at LO underscore Ducks. You could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. Keep those questions coming. We're going to get back to a mailbag pretty soon, as soon as the mailbag gets filled up. And I'm seeing some of the questions, and there's some good ones. So thank you all for that. Uh, what else? You can check this out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc., etc. Once again, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. For Locked on Anaheim Ducks, I'm Jace J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the afternoon. Please remember to be safe out there, be kind to one another, and ducks fly together.